Hey everyone, I'm Destic and welcome back to the third devlog for Project Z9. In this devlog we'll be going through the new state system and updates on weapons, feedback, main menu and customization. And without further ado, let's jump right into the first topic, the new state system. One of the reasons this devlog took so long to make is the state system that I had to implement. It's a system where every player can always only be in two states at once, a movement state and an action state. This allows me to have specific rules for every state, such as direction to point, max movement speed, whether the weapon should be sheathed or not, and much more. Also, I don't have to repeat certain rules whenever I create a new feature and can ensure a certain consistency throughout all mechanics. It was a crucial and necessary change for the future of the project, though it took a lot of time and dedication to pull through, as you barely notice any visual difference. Now let's move on to actual visible updates and start with the main menu. I did an overall on the main menu, so it hopefully doesn't look like a prototype anymore. Also, I've updated the inventory visually and gave it new features, one of them being the character customization. You can now customize your character with clothes and even color them. They will be saved per item and some items, like the hoodie, can even have up to three colors. Another update on the visual side is the outline that is now added to the character to enhance the anime look. It helps rounding up the character nicely while also adding a lot of functionality which you'll see in later parts of the video. The options menu also got a few updates. You can now tweak camera distance, camera shake intensity, audio and field of view. Some of the sliders will also dim the options menu to help you see the difference while tweaking them. Next on the list we have weapons. There's a new weapon available, the katana. Anyone that played as 4 league before will notice that it has very familiar attacks. The light attack chains into a 4 hit combo and holding the left mouse button will perform a heavy attack which knocks enemies away. Using the right mouse button will cause the player to slide backwards a bit. Upon releasing the button or holding it for too long, the player will dash forward and knock up all enemies in the way. Performing an air attack will make you start spinning your katana around you while moving forward through the air. While it was already shown with the 4 hit combo, I want to point out that I've also implemented chaining attacks. So now you're able to chain some combos such as air attacks into heavy attacks for the tesla blade or the katana. I've also updated the model for the shotgun and created some animations for it, since it didn't really have its own animations before. Another new feature is the knockback and knockback recovery. I've added new animations to it and in theory it works like you'd expected it to. You get knockback and whether you hit a wall or not, you will be either smashed into it or land on the floor following up with a getup animation. There is an additional twist though. In S4 you were able to nullify a knockback by quickly following up with a dodge, jump, into run. We have agreed that a successful melee attack should not punish the attacker, but rather reward him. Instead, the new system relies on the reflexes of the person that was hit. When getting knocked back, you'll have a small time frame right when you touch the ground where you can recover with a dodge. This will prevent you from having to wait for the get up animation and get you right back into the action. A successful recover is indicated by your outline glowing up in a whitish tone, while a fail will result in a purple outline. Failing it happens when you try to dodge too early or too late and it prevents you from trying to recover again from the current knockback. It sounds more complicated than it really is. And with that, let's transition to the feedback part of this devlog. Something that became very clear to me when doing a playtest with some people from the Discord was the lack of feedback when you hit or get hit. These informations are very important and you shouldn't have to constantly peek at your HP to see if you got hit or not. Therefore, I've added multiple ways to convey this information. First, I've added a hit marker that pops up whenever you hit an enemy. If you hit multiple shots in a small time frame, you'll see that the hit marker grows to let you know that you're doing well. Next, when getting hit, your outline flashes in a bright white red color. This also happens to enemies that you hit. It was still not good enough though, since there were still times where I didn't notice that I took damage. So I've added a red flash that pops in your HUD every time you get hit, and your HP bar also flashes in a similar color like your outline. On top of that, there's a small camera shake to show that something is happening. Lastly, I've added a hit indicator that points in the direction of the damaging source. The distance varies based on the distance of the damaging source. Being able to differentiate between enemies and allies is crucial to the gameplay. In S4 League, the clothes of your enemies were tinted in a red color to easily differentiate between them. It's a good and clear idea, however it makes red clothes problematic since you could mistake your ally for an enemy. So instead of changing the cloth color, I've decided to change the outline, which means that the outline of your allies is colored black while the enemies is tinted red. Camera shake was also added to weapons, which helps to intensify their impact. Melee weapons, however, only trigger a camera shake when the player hits an enemy. We also have new soundtracks made by Tatsu, which you'll partly hear at the gameplay footage later. Last change regarding feedback is death. I've added dying animations and visual effects, which should help to quickly differentiate between dead and alive players. Now let's move to the gameplay part. Some of you might have already noticed the new UI elements. These are thanks to Ariad from our Discord, who offered his skills as a UI and UX designer to help us with the project. We have started to do playtests on the Discord to speed up the progression of finding and fixing bugs. 
It helps tremendously since there are multiple things that I cannot test by myself properly. After our first playtest, I've decided to add a couple of extra parts to the current team deathmatch level. These changes allow for more vertical gameplay since before there weren't easy ways to get up on the roofs. And now, to get to the juicy part, I want to show you some of the gameplay footage that I've recorded during our latest playtest. Spoiler alert, the game still has plenty of issues. Let's go! Yeah, I added a couple of extra obstacles here so you can actually move more around the map. Oh, you've been blocking them out. Yeah, just like, I mean, I just like added a couple of extra pieces so the... Uh, so the... Roofs are actually accessible. Oh, I just realized this map is now playable in uh, PPM. Yeah. The ping is there. My ping. Yo, the ping seems alright. Yeah. yeah. Wait, that's what? Just oh my god. But that's like sometimes actual heavy spike, I don't know why. Oh my god, dude. there's some massive spike sometimes. Holy shit. I get hit, and it flashes that I got hit, but my health, oh, my health value doesn't update. I see, you're right. Yeah, it doesn't update until the server, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's how much damage you can kind of thing. Right. So it might be, uh, it might be chugging because it's trying to, you know, push those values to all the players. Yeah, well. there's probably too much on the network going on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Holy shit. Dude, everyone's yeah. running on the spot on Uh-oh, I can't even swap weapons. Uh-oh. Not everybody's running on We broke it. Wait, dude, I see people walking. Oh, is jumping and stuff. Oh. Oh, I, oh, I see enemies walking. Okay, okay. Oh, there we go. Hi. Move over! Oh shit. Ah, goddamn. Fuck! Should have good man, that's my sword. Bridge noob! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you put it up there. <laughs> wait, I can. Wait, I can fight you! Huh? Yeah, I. I d what? What is this going on here? Anybody <laughs> else? It's one starting in. I have to And we are playing. Oh my god. No. And it disappeared. Oh, uh, Zal? What the hell? Oh, you're, uh... You're like spinning yeah. infinitely on the floor for me. Were you put into the oh shit! Okay, I think uh, the ball is officially gone. Yeah, I think I think the ball is it unexisted. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think gone. Oh, I didn't know I could wear the tie by itself. Yeah, you have like oh. a little icon at the uh, shoe slot. Oh, I have the ball. Wait, what? Wait, you have the ball? Never mind. It just said you had the objective. Wait, try scoring. As you can see, there's still a long way to go. The network has too much load on it currently and I will have to definitely work on it next. Touchdown also seems to have plenty of problems that need to be focused on. Thanks again to everyone that participated in the playtest and helped me figure out problems that I couldn't find by myself. If you want to be part of a future playtest, make sure to join our Discord and get yourself the tester role so you'll be notified whenever a playtest is planned. And with that, we reach the end of this devlog. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like the project and would like to support it, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. See you next time!